Welcome back to another episode of the Healthy with Heartland podcast. I am your host, Justin Freistadt, of course, joined with your favorite creative directors today, Simon and Shannon. How we doing, fam? How's it going? I'm fired up. This hey, is an exciting family. episode. Yes, it is. Yeah, we've got a fire guest for you today. He's actually my personal mentor. You're going to get a ton of value and knowledge. But before we introduce this special guest, let's get over to Shannon for some announcements. Awesome. Welcome back, Heartland family. If you are a member of the Heartland family, you can take advantage of an awesome reorder special this month. So we have a whole turkey coming for you absolutely free with your reorder. Uh, so let us know if you are, are ready for that. If you have not scheduled a pop-up, uh, please do so. You can visit heartlandfoods.com slash host dash pop-up. Uh, it's super easy. Invite your friends, family, neighbors. Uh, it's a really great way to introduce your families and friends to Heartland Foods. Uh, quick shout out to the Heartland family. Thank you so much for all of our referrals in the month of October. We appreciate all those happy Heartland families and you introducing uh, those new families to us. If you are not a member of our foodie group on Facebook, we would love to have you. So please make sure that you join and invite your five friends so that when we reach 5k, you can maybe win that $2,000 of Heartland Farm Source products. I will stop talking. We'll get into the podcast. And with that, let's get started. Okay. So we have Colin Yerkeson on today. He is the <coughs> founder and owner of Leverage Lifestyle, Credit Class, Leveraged Investments. The man is an entrepreneur of all trades. He's a health and wellness guru as well. So we have all kinds of amazing questions and value we're going to get from this guy today. So without further ado, Colin Yerkeson, how's it going, man? What's up, my man? Thanks for having me on. I'm pumped to be here. Yeah, this is great. So I guess let's just uh, get into your background at first and uh, tell everybody, you know, how you got to where you are. Yeah, sure. So um, I've been an entrepreneur for about two and a half years now. I quit my corporate job on August 22nd, 2019. Still remember that day fresh in my mind. It was one of the best days ever. Um, so yeah, I mean, I went to college, uh, University of Arizona. Uh, I got a business degree, um, studied business management, and I really had no idea what I wanted to do. But I knew deep down I wanted to be you know, very wealthy. I wanted to have freedom. I wanted to have success and provide impact to the world. Um, just had no idea how I was going to do it. But I think it all just starts with a seed in your mind. Um, and you know, you got to plant that seed as you go about your life. And you know, as you start to figure things out, you start to add up the equation, you know, what is it that I really want to do? Um, so, you know, I knew right away that the corporate job was not what I wanted to do. And that's honestly how you do find out, you know, what you're supposed to do by doing a bunch of stuff. And then eventually all the things that you're doing are leading you down a certain path to get to really where you need to be. Um, so, you know, within two weeks of starting that job, um, I was miserable. I was driving to work 30 minutes there and, uh, you know, listening to like Gary Vee, Grant Cardone, Ed Milet, you know, all these massive personal brands out there that are inspiring, that are helping people, you know, achieve freedom in this new, amazing online world, which is also called the metaverse. Um, so that's, you know, really where it all started with personal development, that that seed was planted, you know, in my mind that, you know what? you know, maybe there is another world out there and maybe I'm not on the right path right now, even though I got a degree, even though I set myself up, you know, at this whole job thing where I'm supposed to climb the corporate ladder for the next 20, 30 years, I feel like I need to do something different. And that's very hard, you know, to, to be on a path, your whole life lined up to do something. And then knowing deep down inside that you're not where you're supposed to be and everyone else around you thinks that's, you know, where you are supposed to be. So, um, that took about six months of just listening personal development, reading books, podcasts, um, you know, just really being informed all this information I never learned before in college. I was basically going through my own educational system, uh, which was just personal development. And it was mind blowing because no one in my family has ever done personal development. My dad never told me about it. My mom never did it. No one ever meditated. No one ever did anything like that. So this was all brand new to me. And it, it was just, it sparked a flame inside of me. Um, so that was about six, seven months of just driving to work every day, listening to books, podcasts, getting fired up, sitting at my desk, energy drops. I'm depressed drive back home, fired up again, get home. And then I'm tired because I spent all day doing stuff that I didn't like doing. 
Um, so finally one day after I started to, you know, start my personal brand, um, I downloaded Instagram. I grew my account to like 30,000 followers using, you know, celebrity growth, um, which we could talk about later, but you know, I, I now had a huge audience and I started to preach about, Hey guys, I went to this Grant Cardone, uh, you know, this Grant Cardone event and we learned about real estate and this is passive income. And this is how, uh, you can get around capital gains by this opportunity zone. And like, I would just speak everything I was learning on my brand. And eventually my, my boss came in and was like, Hey, you can't talk about this stuff. Um, you know, you're, you either can do this or you can leave. And I was like, I'm, I'm quitting then. So I quit my job, $50,000 in debt, which was, you know, insane. Uh, my dad pulled over on the side of the road when I told him and he almost had a heart attack. Um, so yeah, I, I really burned the bridges. I burned the boats and that was it. I was going to make it online. There was no plan B. I was not going back to New Jersey to live with my parents. Um, so I started out month one, just teaching people how to grow their personal brands, because now I had a brand. I was utilizing Instagram every single day. It's where I lived on. Um, and I was actually, you know, motivating and producing content that was valuable. So people started coming to me saying, Hey, I want to grow my brand too. I have a coffee shop. I have this business. How can I get followers? How can I produce good content with value so that I can monetize and make money online too? So I would help people do that. The first month I made like 10 grand. Um, so right away I knew, oh my God, this is something. If I just made 10 grand, I only made three grand at a job that I had to you know, get a degree for four years for. Imagine what I can do in like two, three years of, of this route. So that's when I went all in. Um, it kind of transitioned from personal brand growth to credit. Uh, so then, you know, every, what, what happened was my, my credit score dropped so low because I took out a loan to invest in a business that ended up being a scam. Um, you know, I got, I, I was $50,000 in debt trying to fix my credit. I learned the fair credit reporting act. I learned how to dispute items. I got items removed. My credit went up to like a seven thirty. applied for seven credit cards in a one day in a sequence, got approved for like $75,000 in capital. I storied the whole thing on Instagram. Everyone's like, how'd you do that? I'm like, boom, now I can teach credit. So I started teaching credit for free, gave out free value for about three months. And then I launched my first business in November of 2019 called Credit Class. Uh, credit Class is where I taught people how to leverage credit, build income and travel. And that blew up. That was my first, you know, aha business, my first break. Um, you know, I launched it on Black Friday, you know, 26 people signed up, made about 6,000 bucks in a day. And then I never looked back. I started investing all of that money uh, back into marketing. You know, I started traveling. I started utilizing all the free travel stuff, taking first class to, you know, Bali, Dubai, London. I was just going all over the world. Uh, my lease ended in Scottsdale and I never looked back. I left you know, with the, uh, with the goal in mind to just travel the world and promote my personal brand. And that then led into e-commerce. So I own an e-commerce business now called leverage investments. And then, uh, through Bitcoin and stuff and through passive income and through all these tax, uh, mitigation strategies, I started learning. I was like, why am I just focusing on credit when I do like six different things? Mm. I love all this other stuff. I want to teach this too. So that's when leverage lifestyle was born and leverage lifestyle, uh, teaches people, five pillars instead of just credit. So it's passive income, credit, personal branding, uh, Bitcoin, and also travel. So you got five pillars that I live my life by that have made my life what you see on Instagram. You know, I don't hide anything. My brand is 100% authentic. I wake up and I post exactly what I'm doing every day. Um, so everyone wants to do that, that life as well. So I said, why not share it? So it's 97 bucks a month. Uh, we have almost 700 members right now. And um, yeah, that's pretty much been it. I'm a huge Bitcoin advocate. Uh, I buy Bitcoin every single day. Um, and yeah, man, life's been super exciting, you know, since I took that leap and, and quit my job. So I'm going to put my, my stamp of approval on all of this because I am a leveraged lifestyle member. I am actually flying to Hawaii tomorrow, Delta One first class for free, thanks to... Um, Let's go. And leverage lifestyle. So Let's there's go. an incredible amount of value in there. So just join it. It's 97 bucks. It's with light speed. There's an entire amazing course in there. And if you want to really take it to the next level, do the personal mentorship. But we'll come back to all that stuff. I'm, I also have an Amazon store with uh, with Colin as well, which is... Justin is a, is, is a, uh, a all-out member of everything. <laughs> Our people. 
Yes. I mean, when, when I identify greatness, I go all in. So we're very congruent with that. And uh, this is a health and wellness podcast. And I know you're very involved with that because as we all know, it is a prerequisite to everything in life, you know, the health. Absolutely. So let's get into that and then we'll come back to, cause I want to talk about the e-commerce and all that too. But um, so what, what are some things that you have in your routine uh, that are your health and wellness hacks? Right here. Um, so every day, man, I, I do like a two hour morning routine. If I have, you know, all of my, my time, which I usually do because I create my own schedule. Um, you know, I, I do a two hour time block every morning, so I don't set an alarm. I think it's very important to get, you know, the amount of sleep that your body needs for that day. Some days you might be traveling. Some days you might have a crazy hard workout. So your body always needs a certain amount of rest, usually between six to eight hours. So last night I slept like seven and a half hours, which is a little more than usual. Um, just because I traveled from Vegas to Miami last night. So, um, you know, I let myself sleep in. I wake up, I chug, uh, you know, about a, a half gallon of water, um, which is pretty hard uh, for most. But, you know, I just got used to just chugging it down because I know that if I front load my water, then I'm not going to have to worry about it at night. Um, and I'm not going to be, you know, peeing the bed or waking up to go to the bathroom all the time. So I try to front load the water uh, at least half a gallon in the morning. And then usually by like four or five o'clock, I'm pretty much done with the fluids for the day. Um, I take sea salt as well, Celtic sea salt. It's basically Gatorade without all the sugar. Um, so very high quality salts are amazing for you. They retain the water. They're going to help you hydrate more. I take a little handful of that in the morning with my water. Uh, and then I also have like a ginger lemon shot as well. I love them. They get me fired up. Uh, I drink um, bulletproof coffee. I'm not sure if you guys know what that is. Or oh, I just yeah. have a, yep, or I have espresso. Um, so yeah, I'll, I'll do that. And then I actually start the routine. So I usually do uh, about a 10 minute yoga stretch, very basic. Um, you know, I sit on the yoga mat, I do my stretches. I put on some very nice music in the morning, some high frequency uh, meditation music. And I just let that play all morning it gets me, you know, at a very good state of mind. Um, after I do my yoga stretching, then I sit down with my coffee and my journal. And this thing is everything. This is like my Bible that I've carried around with me for two and a half years. Obviously, I went through a lot of them. I have them all over in a bookshelf over there. Um, and this is where the magic happens. So in order to know where you're going in life and in order to you know, be able to analyze yourself and your, your decisions that you've made, if you're tracking everything in a journal, you're never going to let yourself go off track if you're doing it every single day. So for me, I write down my power lists, which are five things that I can take action on for that day. I write the four agreements, which is an amazing book, and I just write all four of them. Um, and then I write on the right side, I write 10 things that I'm grateful for. Um, so, and then I also do a love letter to money, um, on the bottom of the page. So, you know, how much money I want to acquire, uh, when it needs to be acquired by what I'm going to do with that money, how much impact is that money going to have? And I treat money like a relationship with my girlfriend. If I'm not paying attention to my girlfriend, if I'm not showing her love, then she's going to leave. Money's the same thing. If you're not looking at your bank account, if you're not obsessed with your money, then you're not going to be making much money. So it's, it's the same exact thing where energy goes or when, where focus goes, energy flows. And that's usually, you know, with anything in life. So that's very important to me. After I do the journal, uh, I do meditation, uh, and I do breath work. I do breath work before I do Wim Hof. So I do three rounds of 30 that gets me in an amazing state. And then I'm feeling light. I'm feeling happy. Uh, you know, my, my oxygen levels are amazing. And then I do 10 minutes of meditation. Then I step outside and I say 10 out loud affirmations. So things that I want to happen in the future, I act as if they're already done. I say how grateful I am for actually having it done in my life. Even if it is a 10 year goal, you know, I act in that moment as if I'm already there. So I, that might be a little overwhelming. You know, it takes a long time to do all that stuff. And then after it's not even done, I then go on a walk around Brickle Key. Um, it's like 45 minutes to an hour. I listen to a podcast, get back and do red light. Uh, therapy and I do vibrational therapy, take a cold shower. Then I sit at my desk and I start my work day at around 8.30 or 9. Like I said, it depends because I don't set an alarm. Um, and yeah, guys, like it's a lot of stuff, but I've built that up over two and a half years and I'm still always implementing and changing things. So I wouldn't get overwhelmed, you know, with what I just said. 
pick one or two of those things if you don't have a morning routine yet and just start implementing it slowly. You don't want to make your morning routine feel like a chore or else you're never going to do it. You want to enjoy this. I look forward to this every single day because I love how I feel in the moment. I know, you know, the, the positive impact this has on my life. So a couple of questions there, because there's a lot of things you said that I'm sure is new to the listeners. So yeah. let's start with the Wim Hof. Can you explain what that is? Yeah. So Wim Hof breathwork, uh, there's a guy named Wim Hof who this dude has basically uh, survived in, you know, a ice cold tundra, like in the North Pole underwater for, I don't know, I think like 45 minutes or maybe two hours. And he proves that with the power of breath, you can stop disease you can uh, stop hypothermia. So, you know, oxygen is everything. The only reason old people die is because they don't have oxygen anymore. So mm -hmm. if you can keep your oxygen levels at all time highs, everything in your body, your, your, you know, the way that you're moving, the way you're performing in the gym, uh, the way you're fighting off disease and sicknesses. I've been traveling for two and a half years. I've never got COVID once. Why is that? Because I'm extremely healthy. I take supplements every day. I'm in a thing called the superhuman protocol. Um, we can talk about that. But Wim Hof is basically, I'll just perform it real quick. So you're doing three rounds of 30 breaths. So the breath goes like this. So it's, it's a huge inhale with your shoulders going up. And then it's a fast exhale. And you're not exhaling all the way like... You're doing about a half exhale and then inhale again. So you do 30 of them. And then on the last one, you're going to hold your breath. So hold your breath and you go as long as you can. By the third, fourth round, even if you do five rounds, you're going to notice that you can hold your breath longer every single time, um, which is amazing. So on the breath hold, after uh, you inhale on the, on the breath hold, that's when you'll feel lightheaded and you'll feel all of this energy. Your hands might be tingling, your feet might be tingling, and it is such an incredible feeling. It's, it's such an amazing, positive state of mind. Uh, and then if you go into meditation after that, it is game changing because you can mm -hmm. manifest so much faster because the way you're feeling, you're, there's so much energy pulsing through your body. <clears throat> wow. I mean, that's awesome. I, I watch a lot of like the, uh, the surf guys and and the the ufc guys that do like jujitsu and they're doing like the same sort of techniques and yep. it's just so intriguing to me because it's like it has so much more to do with just like not just your your athletic levels but your mindset as well and watching you do that i always you know i always wondered what how you actually do those kind of things you know like what was the actual process and i appreciate you showing us because that's something i want to implement in in you know my daily daily routine <laughs> Uh, just because it's so like, I feel like it's so important. Just that breath work, like you said, Wim Hof injected himself with a with a disease essentially, yep. and and was able Fought to. Fought it off, right? It's it's amazing. It's great. It's yeah, great. download the app. It's the Wim Hof app, and you know, there's like a timer on it. You can time how long your breath holds are. You can track them. So it's it's really neat. That's Sweet. awesome. Uh, and then the other thing you mentioned, uh, of course, is you know drinking the water and getting good sleep. Um, like, I guess. How much water are you drinking? You're just drinking that half gallon, but how much are you drinking in total? So a gallon a day is gallon really day. what you need. Um, okay. And then as far as sleep, I mean, there's a lot of different things I do for sleep too. So I track everything with the Aura Ring. Um, okay, they actually nice. just came out with a new one. Um, I just ordered it. I think the sizing thing just got here. But Aura is incredible. You can track your, your HRV, your resting heart rate, your steps, your REM sleep, your deep sleep, your light sleep. So sleep is the most important thing ever. Um, and if you're not getting a proficient amount of REM and deep and you're only getting light, which a ton of people are because their bodies are overheating, um, you know, they're smoking weed or, you know, they're doing things that are blocking the REM sleep. Mm -hmm. That is very important. So when I started tracking it and I started realizing that I was getting like a 60% score every night, it's like, how do I bump these numbers up to an 80, 85, like average? Um, and that's when I found the, the chili sleep pad. I, I got the Uller. They have a couple of them, but what the Uller does is it's about 700 bucks. It's a one-time investment. It's probably the best sleep investment I've ever made in my life. Um, you can get this sleep pad that, you know, goes on top of your bed and you, uh, have a machine under your bed and you pour water in it. And what this does is it, is it pumps the water in whatever temperature you desire on your mattress. So it's this little thin pad and it's pulsing through your mattress. So it keeps your body temperature low. So in order to get a uh, good deep sleep, you need to have your body drop to about 65 to 60 degrees and stay there. 
at night, what happens is even if your room's like 68 degrees, you got those blankets on, your body's going all these different temperatures. And that's why you wake up a lot throughout the night. Um, so with the, with the chili sleep, it drops me within 30 minutes of me getting in my bed to 65 degrees. Then at 2 a.m., that's when my REM sleep starts. You can track all this because you have aura, so you see your different sleep cycles. Then I pump back up to room temp temperature, which is around 69 degrees, and then my REM sleep is great too. So you know you go in sleep cycles, and you have to adjust the temperature for each sleep cycle. So that's probably the most advanced thing I do. Um, obviously, I don't take it with me when I travel, but when I'm home – I have my whole, you know, routine just perfect. Everything's mm. everything's here. I have my red light. I got my Uller. I got my Kangen water. I got everything. So um, I think when you do have a home, when you are living somewhere that you you can make your own, um, you know, implement all of this stuff eventually. Uh, of course, it takes money, but I mean, your health is the most important thing. So you're, if you're feeling good, um, you know, you're going to perform good. You're going to be making more, you know, money. Um, everything just goes together. Yeah. That's that. Look good. Feel good. Feel good. Play good. Play good. They pay good. Yeah, that's Absolutely. It. <laughs> Not so that then, the next pillar, the, the red light. Tell us oh, about yeah. that. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> yeah. So I use a, it's called Mito or Mito red light. Um, you can hang it on your door in your closet. I just have mine behind my door. Um, and what this red light is, is it basically, uh, what it does is it, it penetrates through your body, um, with, you know, ultraviolet rays. And then it also has, uh, another type of red light and it regenerates your skin health. Um, you know, I, I had really bad acne. Um, so I had a lot of scars and I can easily tell that my skin is more smooth, more soft. Um, and it just does a lot of work that we can't really see, but after doing it for like six months, I mean, the differences are huge. Um, so yeah, it helps with your energy. It helps with your sleep, circadian rhythm. Um, you, you can look it up. I'm no expert on it. Uh, a lot of this stuff I was recommended by my mentor in health. Um, and then I kind of just implement it and, you know, I borrow his trust and everything, you know, just how people borrow my trust for Bitcoin. I borrow his trust because he's an expert and he's been doing it for 30 years. So, um, yeah, that's, that's kind of what the red light is. And while I do the red light, another hack that I found from, uh, my attorney, actually, he uses a thing called vibrational therapy. So you can order it on Amazon. Um, you stand on this thing and it, and it sends like G forces through your body and you're vibrating at a very fast speed. Um, and what this does is it helps your joint health, helps your posture, it aligns you, you know, in the right way. And it wakes you up because you're vibrating so fast. And when you stand off this thing, your whole body is just like jumping for joy. Oh, that's cool. So I do both at the same time. And I read while I do that too, because you can just stand there. You got to stand there for 20 minutes. Why not vibrate? And why not read? Nice. Multiply in time. Exactly. <laughs> nice. How wow. about the cold show, uh, the cold, uh, showers essentially? Like how, like oh you said. yeah. Oh yeah. I only do cold. So like, um, I have a cold plunge. I go to a gym that's like 20 minutes away just because they have a cold plunge and it is freezing. It's like 39 degrees. So, uh, after every workout, no matter what day it is, no matter what muscle group I worked out, I jump in that bad boy for like one to three minutes. Um, you know, I, I don't usually use a timer. I just kind of, you know, in my head. Um, but yeah, on, on, on big days, like where I do legs, I go on that thing for three minutes and cold exposure is incredible for sleep, for oxygen, for, you know, muscle regeneration, um, all that. So yeah, I mean, do, and it also sucks. So <laughs> your, mind, your mindset, when you do stuff that sucks, I always say on Instagram, like guys do things that suck every single day so that life is easy. You know, I, I deal with three different businesses. I got problems every single day that I have to solve. So when I just sat in a cold plunge that was literally cold <laughs> as ice for three minutes, everything after, if there's a problem, nothing really affects me and I can just handle it chill and relaxed and, you know, think clearly. So, um, yeah, the cold stuff is great in the morning. If you can just smash a cold shower real quick after your routine, before you sit down and work, you're going to feel a lot more awake and alert than if you took a hot shower and stayed in there for 20 minutes. So at least to implement it, start hot and then turn that thing to cold for the last like minute and you're going to feel great. Yeah. Get comfortable being uncomfortable, right? That's what mm -hmm. I said, David Goggins. <laughs> oh, yeah. 
great, great does, guy. Does it ever get better? Like, I mean, I'm sure no. it's, no. It doesn't. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, it, my, my willpower is stronger now. Like it doesn't take me as long. I literally walk up to the thing and I, and I jump in, like I do like a cannonball and go all the way under. I come out and I'm like, oh. you know, just, just focusing on my breath. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, if you've only done it once and then you skip three days and you try it again, if you do it every day, it's going to be a little easier, but no, it does not get easy at any time. Like your body's still freezing every single day. I feel like you're just getting used to it. Probably. You're just like, oh yeah, I, I know it's going to suck. So I'm just, I'm you're just mentally prepared. It, yeah. yeah, exactly. You know I mean, you're, you're building a calic in your mind, you know, yep. for shit that sucks. And that's, I do shit that sucks all day, every day. I have a trainer who beats my ass for an hour and a half in the gym every single time I go. We're doing the craziest leg days. I Everyone hates legs, and you know how strenuous and hard that is. So, yeah, I, I go in after a long day of work. I take a lift there. The thing with me is, like, if someone's telling me what to do and I have things near me, like if I'm supposed to gain 10 pounds of muscle and I got meal prep in the fridge and it's like, yo, just go to the fridge, take this out, eat this. It has your macros, your micros, everything you need. I'm going to do it. So I make the hard shit easy for me to do. So I don't like driving anymore. I hated driving to the gym. I sold my car. Now I lift to the gym. And when I get there, everything's automated. I have a guy saying, yo, drop and give me 30. Yo, do this, do that. <laughs> Boom, right in the cold plunge, Uber home. So like, it's easy for me. I make it easy to do hard shit. Right. Makes Love sense. that. How, how important do you think that is to like make sure that all those things are like set up that way? Because I mean, doing hard shit is hard essentially, but like making it so that it's easy and, and like getting in a rhythm, how important is that? It's everything. I mean, it's your, it's your habits. It's your routine. So if you can make your life set up around the shit that sucks that all these millionaires and billionaires are doing every day, I mean, just think about how you can line it up so that, you know, it feels pretty easy or feels rewarding for me, you know, doing this morning routine, I need inspiration around me. I can't do it in a dark basement that smells like shit. I have to do it looking at the sunrise above the ocean, you know, feeling that amazing vibration and that amazing energy. So for me, you know, it didn't always start like that. I was doing my morning routine in a dark room, you know, uh, on a whiteboard in my house in Scottsdale, you know, that did smell like crap and had alcohol all over. So, you know, it, it doesn't, it doesn't start easy. It's going to be hard as hell first, but over time, you're going to keep doing the hard stuff. Just make your environment better to fit, you know, your needs and to make it easy to get to the things that are hard to do. Um, so that has to do with all the things I said, if the red light was somewhere that I had to go to, then I probably wouldn't do it because it's in my room. And because I have a book next to it and I like reading, boom, now I want to go in there. So reward yourself for me, like being able to read on the way to the gym, a book I like makes me want to go to the gym because I want to read. So just trick your mind to get it to the hard shit. Mm. It's huge. Yeah, that makes sense. Colin, by the way, what are you reading? Uh, I have like four or five books on rotation at all times. Um, I actually just finished, uh, I'm reading a Tony Robbins one right now. Um, forget the name of it, but it's an older one. Uh, I just read Think and Grow Rich again for like the third time. I'm, re I'm reading uh, The Creature of Jekyll Island, which is about uh, the central banks. Um, I'm reading a Bitcoin book called The Book of Satoshi. Um, so I like to just books for me. I don't like go to one book and I'm like mm -hmm. stuck on that book. Yeah. I'm constantly rotating books on how I feel for that day. Mm -hmm. Um, and that's super important. Like you should have a morning read. You should have a nighttime read at night. I read the Jeff Bezos autobiography because mm -hmm. that, that helps me fall asleep and I I want to be a billionaire. So, um, I mean, books are just mentors for me. So I'm always swapping mentors. Um, and I have them on rotation all the time. I, I go through about two books sometimes a week. Wow. wow. Yeah, it's so important That's about the huge. rule of five. It's like people get that wrong. They think it's the physical proximity, but it's really who's in your head the most. That's yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yep. When I when I was you know working on my job and I had such negative influence around me all over, um, I resorted to the internet to internet mentors that I never got to speak to, but they were still my mentors. Grant Cardone was number one. Right. Gary V was the guy who got me to quit my job. Like I've never met these people. Well, I met Grant now, but I've never met them before, and they right. changed my life. So it can be anyone online. Wow. So you met Grant. 
I mean, I'm sure we, we've all taken the, uh, we've done the courses and, <laughs> and, you know, we definitely follow them. We saw them on the uh, um, Discovery Channel doing the, uh, the billionaire oh, thing. Yeah, yeah. What's it like? What was it like meeting him? What was the, uh, the interaction that you had there? Yeah, so I went to his event. Um, I went to two of his events, actually. So I went to 10X. Uh, I didn't meet him personally there, but I met him at a smaller event in Phoenix. Um, you know, nothing too crazy. Just, you know, shook his hand, told him that how much I appreciate him. Um, and now what's funny is I'm, I'm actually starting to like, we just had an event and I, and Gary Brecca, his company, uh, just got bought by Grant Cardone and now they made it 10 X health. Um, I also have Grant Cardone's pilot speaking at my event and I had Gary Brecca speak at my event. So I'm getting closer to Grant. Um, I'm using his whole network. So he definitely knows about me, uh, and Cody, my, my partner, um, so it's pretty cool. Yeah. We have his pilot coming in and we have Gary Brecker coming in who his, is his, uh, his partner in the health company. Um, so getting there. That's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. Looking forward to meeting Ryan and Gary. Oh I'll yeah. The event. It's yeah. going to be yep. great. Yep. So, yeah. Wh- when's the event yeah, and, uh, wh- what is it? Just let everybody know if they want to come. Yeah. So the event is the lifestyle boot camp number two in Miami. We just had one last month. It was amazing. I uh, had about 55 people show up. We're going to have a little more this time. We're going to have like three yachts. It's a two-day event. We got amazing guest speakers. Like I said, we got Bradley. We got um, Ryan uh, Setko, who's Grant Cardone's pilot and business partner. We got Gary Brecca, who owns Streamline Medical. Um, they just changed it. As I said, they're in a transition now. Um, we have a couple other speakers too. We got me. Justin's actually speaking. Um, hey, so yeah, it's going to be... A wild time. We got private dinner. Uh, we have a private day for you know our platinum members, which Justin is doing. Um, so there's so many different ticket tiers, so many ways to come. Um, but yeah, it's going to be a phenomenal time. It's on March 12th, I believe. Something like that. Yeah. In March. We'll, we'll uh, post about it. We'll let you all know. Yeah. Absolutely. Man, we covered so much good stuff here. What, uh, what else do we got? Uh, so you mentioned like, you know, uh, you have the meals in the fridge, that kind of thing. I, I just, because we are Heartland Foods and, you know, we deal with food and that kind of thing. I just want to know what you're eating on a day-to-day basis. Yeah. So I'm eating really clean. Um, I use a meal prep company here that's like all for bodybuilders. And, you know, my girlfriend's on like the weight loss one. Uh, and then I'm on the athletic one. So it's like more calories. Um, so yeah, what I eat is I eat like chi- any kinds of meats. I eat chicken, I eat uh, ground turkey, I eat fishes, I eat steaks, um, you know, all that grass fed. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I have, you know, all different grains, you know, there's rice, there's um, mashed potatoes, sweet potato mash, all that. Uh, and then a vegetable too. Um, they do a lot of vegetables, which I love because I like vegetables. I just never make them or never eat them. So if they're like I said, if they're put in front of me, I eat them. So that's, that's for me, it's like ease of use. Last time I got home, I had my meal prep delivered, ate it real quick. Good to go. Um, so yeah, I love, I love meal prep and I try to eat really clean. Um, I'm not going to lie when I travel, I, I don't really care. I just eat whatever I want. I mean, I've been blessed with a really good metabolism. Um, so I'm probably not eating enough, honestly. Um, but yeah, yeah. That's awesome. So we always talk about the, the 80, 20 rule, right? So 80% of the time, if you're doing the right stuff and then 20% of the time, you know, like you said, if you're traveling or something like that, there's not a, really a lot of good places that you can really go to as far as, you know, being on the road and stuff. But, um, you know, we identify with that. And I, I mean, I'm enjoying a lot of this cause I'm taking, I'm taking notes here and I'm <laughs> like, first I got to get my, my routine down, yeah, you know, in the morning, morning. Routine. I'm, I'm definitely doing that, like that breathing and, and the cold showers and that kind of stuff. And right. then, of course, like I, I really am intrigued by, you know, what I mean, setting it up, setting up your your entire house and your lifestyle just based on making all the hardships super easy. I mean, uh, you know, yeah, I think that's, you know, it's brilliant. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, cool. I, I mean, look at Tony Robbins. He has a cold plunge in every single one of his houses. <laughs> that's the first thing he does every morning. He does the breath. He does yeah. a different breath work. You could look up Tony, Tony Robbins breath. He does one where it's like he does uh, three rounds of 10 where it's like. <sighs> So it's more intense, like arms up, pumping the air up and out. Um, and then he goes right into a visualization meditation right after that. Um, and then he jumps in a cold plunge or he might jump in a cold plunge right away, I think. So his state, he's all about state. The book I'm reading now is about your state. 
Um, your state of mind, your state of being is how everything in your life is going to transform into what the state is. So you're in a negative state when you woke up because you got bad news before you go to bed. If you start your morning routine in a negative state, your whole day is going to be negative. You're attracting negative negativity to your life. Um, so state is everything. If you don't have a good state, like for me in Vegas, I was super hungover. So I got an IV and you know, I, I, I slept more. I got hydrated. Then I did my morning routine at like 3 p.m. because I was feeling way better. So I, I don't I don't do anything unless I feel good. Mm. Mm. That makes sense. So we briefly talked about meditation, and that's that's something I'm super interested. Um, you know, I'm doing it a little bit when we wake up and that kind of thing. But I'm super interested in knowing like what is your meditation routine? Like what are you what are you actually? Because you know you, people talk about if you think about it, uh, it can come to fruition. So is that mm. is that kind of what? you're doing? Are you just thinking about, you know, when you're meditating, are you thinking about, like you said, the money and, and your five pillars or uh, how's that so, work? So I leave meditation to itself, just focusing on breath and really being still, um, not thinking at all is really what okay. you want to do. Uh, the other stuff is more manifesting and attracting those things into my life. So for meditation, um, you know, I usually put on a uh, liquid bloom, you guys could write that down. He's an amazing artist that has more like tribal. I love Tulum. So like I love like that tribal kind of music. Um, and, and that gets me in a really positive state of mind. And I can meditate for about eight to 10 minutes through that. Um, and yeah, I just try to focus on my breath. But me and my girlfriend will, you know, switch on and off between manifestation med meditations where it's someone actually speaking uh, where it's like, hey, you know, uh, remember the happiest moment uh, of your life uh, and now, you know, feel that moment and relive it. And now think of another moment that you're going to live. So you match your, you know, your feeling and your gratitude to a moment that doesn't exist yet. You create it in your head and then you manifest it through your actions in your life. Um, so we do that. We switch on and off. And then I also have uh, another thing called like brain, brain, uh, something brain xm or something and uh, it has these like goggles that you wear and it has headphones too and it actually does these fast lights that like trigger uh your delta waves your theta waves and you can listen to a manifestation uh soundtrack while you have this thing on and that thing is crazy too so i try to do that a couple times a week as well um and that's just a whole nother hack that thing is like i think it's like 600 bucks or something and it's pretty cool Oh, that's awesome. That's pretty cool. I kind of want to take it now to something more more personal. I know we're talking about health and wellness, but you mentioned that that one of your passions is traveling. Like, what, mm -hmm. where's your favorite place to go? Where you know, like, what are what are some of those places that that you really like and you enjoy and you feel like you know they bring the best out of you when you travel there? Yeah. So uh, I would say in the past year, my favorite place has been Positano uh, in Italy. It mm -hmm. was one of the most fun trips. We we're only there for like forty eight or seventy two hours. Um, <laughs> that one, that one, Santorini, we went there next. Uh, but yeah, Positano blew my mind. Just the energy of, you know, these Italian towns that are built on top of the cliffs on the Amalfi coast, mm -hmm. um, you know, with all these vibrant colors, everyone's having wine, um, you know, the pasta, the pizza, everything's phenomenal. The Italians are so nice. Mm -hmm. You know, they're saying Arrivederci and like, <laughs> they're just hilarious. Like everything just feels like a movie. Um, we went in September. And that was that was easily the my favorite place in Europe. Um, I love Spain. We go to Spain all the time because my girlfriend's from Spain. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, we were in Barcelona a lot. We were in Malaga. We were in Marbella. We went to Ibiza. Um, so Spain's got a bunch of beautiful places. They have cliffs too, amazing beaches, great food, great people. Um, Europe in the summer is like my goal. Every summer I go to Europe um, and just try to live out there for two, three months because there's nothing more beautiful than being able to just, you know, hop on planes, an hour ride. You're going from uh, Positano and you land in Santorini. You're in a whole nother world. Yeah. Um, you can't get that in America. You know, everything's kind of similar, you know, in the Midwest or the right. East. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I absolutely love Europe. Uh, my all-time all favorite so far in terms of just feeling like you're not even on planet Earth is the Maldives. Mm. Uh, I went to the Maldives uh, last February, I think. We had such an amazing time. I actually redeemed all my points. It was like 425,000 Marriott points um, and stayed completely for free. It was five nights for free uh, on an overwater villa. It usually costs like 20 grand. Um, and yeah, flew there first class on Emirates, which is also just mind blowing. I mean, you're drinking champagne, eating caviar, um, all for free, 
you know? So uh, just from just doing my businesses and spending all my money on credit cards, every single month I earn 100,000 points or more on my Sapphire Reserve. And then I get a ton of Amex points for all my business expenses. Um, and yeah, I mean, about a million points a year. And then every every year we do a couple crazy trips. And yeah, it's amazing. Um, one thing they don't have though in Positano, they don't have Marriott. So you're staying at boutique hotels that cost like 2,500 a night. Oh wow. my God. Yeah. But so it was worth it. Uh, Let's talk about that for a second, because this is something that anyone can do. It's one of the main reasons why I launched an Amazon store with you. The uh, the, uh, the recurring spend on the credit card is going to fuel basically a, a lifestyle of traveling for free. So tell mm. us a little bit about how the Amazon automation works and why why people should do it. Because, you know, I've been doing real estate for a long time. You know, people invest in their 401ks. They do all this stuff to try and invest. And I, I just think that this strategy is the future of people getting out of obscurity and increasing their lifestyle for a minimal amount of money. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, basically what we do with our drop shipping model is, you know, we manage about 105 110 clients right now. Um, and we, we drop ship. So we're basically taking products from one website and we're drop shipping them onto another website. Uh, and then we also have a warehouse model that's called FBA fulfilled by Amazon. Um, and what this is, is we're, we're basically doing supplier orders to our warehouse and then we're shipping them to Amazon after we package the products, we've checked the products to see if they're all good, ship them to Amazon. And then Amazon fulfills the products, uh, for our clients. Now it's a shared business model. So it's your business, but we are just managing it. So you're paying us 35% of your profits every month for doing all the work. So we're listing all of the products. Um, we are doing all the customer service. Uh, the only thing you need to do is like Justin said, have your credit figured out. So, you know, this, is, this investment is not for everyone. I mean, it's $35,000 for the startup costs. And then the, uh, the credit lines needed is $20,000 in credit. You don't want to do this on personal cards because your utilization is going to go up and down and your score is going to be adjusting all the time. So, you really do have to be responsible to be in this investment. We have a lot of real estate investors, like Justin said, it's usually people that have been in real estate for five, 10 years. They're good at it, but it's very slow. They want some more cash flow um, and they want some digital real estate, which this is. So um, yeah, the investment's great. It usually takes about eight to 12 months to return on your initial investment. But the most important thing with this is everything is being spent on credit cards, not your own money. So you know, let's say you do $50,000 in total sales for a month, you probably spend, you know, 30 grand on your credit card, and then you're getting paid out the 50 grand. So what do you do with that? You, you pay off the 30,000 on your card, boom, you just got $30,000 worth of points. Some, some cards you can get one and a half times points. That's 45,000 points just for having 50,000 in sales. So yeah, you made, you know, two to three grand in a month of, of uh, profit after you do the split with us, but now you got 45,000 points in your account. And then at the end of the year, let's say your, your store does a million dollars in year two in sales. Imagine the points you have on that. That's like 1.5 million points. Um, and that you can redeem, you know, with the Amex uh, Charles Schwab card, you can redeem that for cash. And that's 1.25 cents per point. Now you're at $17,500, um, just an extra cash. Or if you want to redeem it for travel and you use transfer partners, you can get about four to seven times the amount of points just by transferring it to Emirates or to Delta or to you know uh, American Airlines. So that's why I love the credit aspect of it. And it all started with credit for me. You know, I mastered credit, taught people how to do sequences, taught people how to travel. But then, you know, all these people had all this business credit. They're like, what do I do with this? I want to generate points, but I don't have anything to buy. So then the e-commerce model came in mind um, where we let them plug in their credit card and we just churn and burn that thing. They make passive income and they get mm -hmm. points. That's smart. That's pretty cool. So the, the starting point is get your credit right and then turn that into business credit. And then once you get into business credit, of course, then then that's when people will work with you once they have like their business credit, all that kind of stuff set up. And then they just earn that passive income after investing that 35 up front. And that's um, that's just the that's that's off of their credit. Or is that cash? Is that 35 up front cash or is that 35 
uh, in terms of so, credit. So there's, you can have it come from credit um, if you liquidate the card. So like we don't take the 35K on, on credit because if we're using QuickBooks and we're charging hundreds of thousands of dollars a month, it's it looks a little suspicious off credit cards. So um, for liability purposes and that reason, we just you know have them wire transfers. So you have to wire it, but you can liquidate money out of a business card at 0%. If you have a 0% business card for 12 months, all you have to do is make the minimum monthly payment, which is 1% of your balance. So even if you liquidated 35K off a business card at 0% for 12 months, you're only paying 350 bucks a month. It's very manageable. Um, so we have people basically, you know, you can, I'm not going to get into all the reasons how you can get it off your card, but yep. you can basically PayPal it to a buddy. He can, you know, liquidate it and you can pull off all the cash out of that credit card and then use that for the down payment. So if you're really smart about it and you plan well and you're responsible, you can get all of this off of a credit card. That's awesome. Yeah. So that's, I mean, the process. So I just went through it, right? I started an LLC, got a business bank account, got the business credit cards, figured out how I'm making my wire. Mm -hmm. And that is literally all I had to do. They send you mm -hmm. and they send you a little, you get a, your, uh, uh, what's called Skype, you know, group chat with the, the yep. guys over at Opulent that are going to, you know, run the, sh the back end of the store. Mm -hmm. It's a very simple process to set it all up. They give you the protocol. I mean, it's a very small time investment to literally own your first business if you've never, you know, owned a business before. This yeah. Or, or, or maybe this is your fourth business, you know, like it doesn't, it doesn't matter. It could be either one. Um, we have so many amazing clients that, you know, have real estate businesses. They have, you know, a personal brand and, and this is just another stream for them. So, it's it's really amazing to be able to you know give people this opportunity and watch them get to travel you know with all the points as well. That's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah, and if you're looking at you know the syndicates and all these other things in real estate, you have you know there's SEC problems. You have to be accredited. Yeah, Th that is not the case with this, right? Yep, it's a small investment for you know a lot of opportunity, um, and you know also you're getting write-offs too. So you know if you talk to your accountant. Um, you could actually write off the service charge every month. You could write off the 35% split. You could write off the actual payment of the store. These are all business expenses. So it's great for taxes as well. That's awesome. Yep. And if you have any physical real estate um, and you're getting passive income, now you can write off your passive income against because now you own a business. So if you're on the W-2 side of things and you're looking for a way to play on the business side of the coin, this was the original reason why I even looked into this strategy. Mm. There's a million benefits to, to, you know, going down this road. That's huge. Yeah. And Absolutely. one thing you kind of talked, you, you, you mentioned is that personal brand. How important is building your personal brand? Because I know that's a new thing now. People are like, oh, make sure you're building your personal brand. But like, what does that mean? And how important is that? <laughs> It's, it's everything, man. It's the only reason I'm here right now because you guys can look me up on Instagram and see what I'm about. Um, it's, it's your report card. It's your resume. Um, it's everything. So if you don't have an Instagram or you don't have a TikTok or you don't have a platform that people can go search you on, mm -hmm. you're not going to be existing in this metaverse that's being built right now. Um, and all the people, it's just like Bitcoin. If, the earlier you get in, the more you're rewarded. So for me, I, I'm blessed. I started in 2019. You know, it's almost three years later. And as you can see, you know, I'm at 800,000 followers now. Um, you know, I have three businesses. I mean, my DMs are full to the brim every single day I wake up with opportunity. So you you set yourself up for success with a personal brand. Uh, and it's not easy. I mean, you, like, like I, if you scroll down in my Instagram, you know, I'm putting out credit value videos for free for three months before I launch a course. Um, and this is what I taught Justin about, you know, in, in, uh, in my mentorship with him, you got to give, 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 give before you get, um, and whatever you're putting into it is what you're going to get out of it. Um, so yeah, I mean, personal brand is 1000% the best investment you can make today in yourself. Uh, and this is lesson one in, in, uh, leverage lifestyle as well. Personal brand comes first, then credit, then you're going to travel because you're earning all the points. Then with travel, you want to get some passive income. So you don't have to be working all the time. You can go actually explore the world. And then you want to save all your monetary energy, all this value you're producing in the best asset of all time. That's not going to be stripped away from inflation, which is Bitcoin. Mm. Mm. Interesting.
So is that that's the what about the future? So we're talking about things that we're doing now. And I know you're, you're probably listening to, you know, or researching on new information. And of course, I mean, Bitcoin is probably that new thing. But what do you see as like the future wise as far as this digital kind of format? Because I think millennials and, and even, you know, the younger generation, this is what everybody wants to do now. Do you feel like it's ever yeah. going to get in like, you know, like uh, oversaturated and, and that kind of thing? Or, or do you think this is, you know, I mean, this is built for everybody? Yeah, so we're moving into like a creator's world. Um, you know, all the information is going to be learned from different creators, from different brands, um, and you are your own brand. You are your business. So, the, like I said, the people that take action now or yesterday are the ones who rewarded the most. The longer you wait, the less you're going to be rewarded. Yes, it can become saturated because eventually this is what everyone's going to do. There's going to be no high schools. There's going to be no colleges anymore. Um, you know, yeah, maybe that'll exist on a smaller scale, but where the world is moving, if you ever read The Sovereign Individual, I highly recommend you read it. Um, it was written in 1997. It predicts everything that's happening today. Basically, we're going to see the fall of the nation states and the rise of the individuals. Um, and I mean, just look at everything. Everything's being decentralized. Um, you got decentralized finance, which takes the existing fin finance world and it decentralizes everything into protocols and to smart you know, blockchains. Mm. You take Bitcoin controlled by no one, owned by everyone. Um, and, you know, everyone can participate. It's on an open monetary network. And it is incredible because you can't create more of it. There's only 21 million. So it's truly scarce. So what I think is going to happen, this is going to be the most exciting 10 years of human history right now that we're living in, which is insane. Um, every day I wake up so excited to be alive in this time. Like we're so overly blessed that we get to even watch what's about to unfold. Um, and like for me and everyone on this call, like we're all participating in it. So, um, I love to teach about Bitcoin because I truly believe that the entire financial world is going to collapse, uh, in the next like five to 10 years or even wow. sooner. We don't know, but when it collapses, it's not going to be like 2008 where all the banks get bailed out. They can't do that anymore. Um, they can't taper. They can't raise rates. They're really stuck. Um, so we're going to really watch, you know, Bitcoin hyper Bitcoinization, which means everyone's going to find out that, holy crap, this is the only place we can store value. The dollar is going to hyperinflate into Bitcoin, which makes the price go up to infinity um, because there's no limit to how high it goes. Uh, there's only a limit on how much Bitcoin can be made. So I think that's going to be a huge thing. Uh, I also think with the metaverse, I mean, everything's moving online. I think people are going to wake up to paying $200,000 to a private institution that's making all this money. They're flying on all their private jets, doing whatever the hell they want. Like the world has just been taken over by these conglomerates and by, you know, the the boomers that have basically rigged the system in their favor and right. we're all paying the consequences of their actions so that's inflation that's what it is it's legal theft um and that's yep. what they're doing to all of us so i mean just the fact that you know i get to wake up every day and and do what i love and teach people and open their eyes about this and that you can have freedom start your own brand make your money online protect yourself put all your wealth in bitcoin travel the world for free with credit cards you know i'm using all of the system get back at them i'm taking yeah. full advantage of the system that's why i call it leverage lifestyle because i'm mm -hmm. leveraging what they've given me and i'm just doing it in the correct way um and this is what all the richest people in the world do so if you hold an investable assets, you're going to be okay. Hopefully you pick some good assets like Bitcoin is the best one. Um, if you own your real estate outright, I think that's also a good option as well. Gold is just a way shittier version of Bitcoin. Um, so yeah, I mean, there's just so much right now that is going down and it's very exciting. You got me hyped up. You're this like, it's a creator's world. It's, it's, I'm, I'm hyped. I'm like, I'm ready. Yeah, that's awesome. You guys are creating We're going right just now. about an hour. So we, <laughs> we got to wrap this one up. But Colin, yeah. thanks so much for coming on today. Yes. And uh, yeah, maybe we'll do this again sometime. Just so excited to see your growth and see where things go. Right. Absolutely, man. I'm, I'm pumped for you too. I can't wait for you to speak at the event and at your other event coming up too. That's insane. Yeah. Mega success. Less than a month. Can't wait. So let's go, guys. Hey, st yes. send me some steaks, please. <laughs> oh, yeah. We'll, we'll, we will definitely hook you up. We got you. Dude, yeah, let me know. I'm, I'm interested. I just need someone to cook it for me. There you go. <laughs> Very nice. Well, we appreciate right, it. Thanks, thanks for your time. Hey, I appreciate you. Bye-bye. <laughs> All, right. All, All right, right, guys. Thanks for joining us this week. We'll be back again 9.30 a.m. next week. And as always, stay healthy with Heartland. See you.